Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. So this is gonna be the start of a really cool series because it's gonna be a personal series and it's also gonna be more like in real life, getting to know me and just seeing some real things like the real world of getting a job and getting hired, the challenges that you have to go through and also the rewards that you get once you actually get a job. how it is. I'm going to show the whole process. So that's why in this video, this is going to be a start of a probably a multi video series because getting a job is kind of a long process. You have to go through the interview steps, meet these different people at the companies. And then you get to the point where there's offers, there's negotiations. And there's really a there's quite a few different things to to know about getting jobs. So I'm really excited to share it with you guys and to show my whole process. So I just want to give you a background about where I'm at and my situation. So I have, I don't have a job right now. I haven't worked in really like quite some time. I haven't worked in over like six months and I don't have, I really like, I don't have that much money. I don't have any money saved. I don't have a job. So I'm really starting from ground zero. Well, I have worked in the past at a few companies previously, but that's kind of all in the past. It doesn't even really matter. It's not relevant because right now I'm starting from scratch again and I'm going on this journey to get hired, to get a job. And I want to show you the whole thing. I'm going to be completely transparent. I'll show the full interview process. I'll show creating my resume based off of my previous experience and some of the projects that I've worked on, even on YouTube, you can reference those too, but we'll get into that when I'm doing the video on creating my resume. Then I'll show the process, talking with recruiters. And also, I don't even have phone service right now. I just couldn't afford the phone service because back when I had a job, I was like buying all this nice stuff. But then once I quit that job, I couldn't really afford any of that stuff that I had, like all the bills that were going on because I just wasn't very conscious with my money and I wasn't saving. I was just kind of spending on all the things that I wanted. And I only had worked that job for six months. And before that, I was also starting again for scratch. I didn't have any money saved. So I've done this multiple times, but this time it's even more exciting because I get to share it with you guys and you'll see the whole process. That's just exactly what I want to do. I want to vlog the whole process, kind of vlog, but also just make it entertaining and take you along on my journey of going from zero, nothing, no job. I don't even have a phone number. We're going to have to figure that out. I think I'm going to use a free phone number app, something like that. And we're gonna go get hired. We're gonna do the interviews. We're going to do the offers. We're gonna negotiate everything. We're gonna get hired. And then I'm gonna take you along. Even if I get hired, I'm gonna take you along on my journey to like what I do at my work. You know, obviously I can't, if I sign some sort of contract, I can't show you like exactly the code, but I'm not trying to leak anybody's source code. I just wanna show you what it's like as a human being to get hired as a software developer to get those paychecks. I'll show you exactly how much I make from the paychecks. And I'll also show you what I do with my money because this time when I get paid, when I get the money, I'm not gonna be as stupid with it. I'm not just gonna be buying like expensive items. I'm gonna actually try to take that money and make more money with it by starting side businesses, by putting that money, investing it into different, uh, whether it's stocks, whether it's other people's businesses that I believe in to help them get it going. And then just figure all of that stuff out because this is life and I want to get better at it. And I want to show my process with you guys because you are my biggest supporters on YouTube. You guys help me. You support me every day in the comments. I've seen every comment that anyone's posted. I'm sorry if I didn't get back to you right away. It's been kind of a struggle just with all these things going on, like not having money, not having a phone. Like I can't drive my car because I don't have money to pay for insurance. All these things are annoying and it's been hard. It's been really like hard on my psyche, on my mental health. But I'm just realizing that I can appreciate being alive. I can appreciate everything. Like I don't need money. I don't need anything. I would be happy without anything at all. But I'm blessed to have the things that I do have. Like I'm blessed to have this YouTube channel, to have this following. I'm blessed to have the inspiration to make videos. And also just having the knowledge to create any type of app that I want in the world to show you guys how you can follow your dreams and create the apps that you want to build to go from nothing. You don't need anything. You don't need a college degree. You don't need to be good at math. You don't need to be 
like an expert. You don't need to be a genius. All you need to do is stay at it to, you know, to practice. That's all it is. If you want to become a great artist, you have to practice like consistently over time. You have to keep going back, painting more. It's the same with becoming a developer. It's the same with being a good person. You have to practice being a good person. You don't just get born and you become a good person. Although your parents, like they try to teach you, but you know, being a kid is hard to listen to your parents. It's hard to have that authority telling you what to do. So it's really more of a personal internal journey if you really wanna become the best person that you possibly can be, if you wanna be good at these skills, you don't just wanna learn from other people. Although having a good community around you to support you is incredible. And I wanna create that sort of community on this channel. I want people to be motivating each other. I wanna motivate you guys to go get a job and not like in a weird, not in a condescending way, like go get a job, hippie, no. I mean, getting a job is great. You can really elevate your lifestyle. You can help people in need, like you can help yourself. You can become more financially independent. You can have more free income to put into other things. And maybe you're like, you're stuck in a situation right now where you're just getting underpaid. You have to work long hours at a job that you don't like, doing something that you hate. I used to work at Taco Bell. That's, that was my first job, that was my last job because I just got into coding when I was young. So I never got to the point where I actually needed to support anybody support me my family's always taking care of me so i know that i'm blessed to have that but it doesn't matter whatever situation you're in you can elevate to the next level and i remember when i was working at taco bell i was making nine dollars an hour and when i first was getting that money it felt so good to get those paychecks i even had this app where it was like the early advance where you get paid the same day but you get like half of your paycheck and i would just be grinding and i'm like oh yeah i got the money in my bank i got it on my card and it just feels so good but I was just always thinking about my money, like $9 an hour if I want to buy something. I remember I really wanted this BB belt, which is like these fancy belts that were trending that all of the cool people on Instagram had. It was like $200. So I was thinking like, damn, I need, I literally need to work. If I'm working 40 hour weeks, like I need to, I, I don't even think I was working 40 hours, but like I was working pretty consistently. But the thing is I was 16 years old, you can't work 40 hours when you're 16 because it's against the labor laws or something like that. So I could only work part time. But I was still putting in the work and I was thinking like, I want to get that belt, but it's $200, which means I have to work like two, like 20 plus hours. And I hated working at Taco Bell. I hated it. Like, I'll tell you something. I'm vegan. I've been vegan since then. And I know Taco Bell has vegan options, but uh, they don't really like they're better for vegetarians at least. But for vegans, like I literally saw one time the dude who worked there, he just straight up, he was like uh, adding new lettuce to the thing. And he straight up just grabbed like a handful of cheese and dropped it in the lettuce and mixed it around. That changed my mind. Like, I was like, no way am I ever eating Taco Bell ever again. Because that was gross. As a vegan, like, I don't like eating cheese. And <laughs> to put it in the lettuce, like, that's, that's evil. So, yeah, if you're vegan out there, I wouldn't recommend Taco Bell. But yeah, imagine working as a vegan. You can't eat anything at your job. So, like, I was going hungry. I was working 12-hour shifts, 8-hour shifts with no food. My stomach was empty. And then just being there in general, like having to having to be the spokesperson for Taco Bell, like you pull up to the window. I was the guy on the mic. I was also the guy taking people's orders at the front. It was fun. I love meeting people. Don't get me wrong, but it's definitely a lot. And you have some bad experiences where people will get in your face and like your coworkers make fun of you. I never really had any good friends. Like there were some people my age, but it was just hard working in customer service. I'll tell you that. And nobody just respects each other. Like I remember I had a manager who was always being mean to me. Like she would tell me to go, like she would basically try to treat me as like her personal servant. And she would tell me like, go get me a drink while she was sitting in the office. I could have said no, but I was like, okay, I'll get you a drink. And then also like they got mad about me because I didn't like, I remember when I was washing the dishes, like I always would drain the thing, the water out because I didn't want to put my hands in like the dirty gross water. And no, they, they got mad about that. And they're like, don't, you can't drain the water out anymore. And I was like, damn, like I have to actually, you know, keep the water. Although, you know, it's true. Like that's kind of wasteful to just be like filling up the water, draining it. <laughs> and yeah, it doesn't make any sense, right? Cause you, you, you have to fill up the water and then you kind of do like a session where uh, it starts like rumbling the dishes around to clean them better. And then I would drain it out and then start like, you know, finalizing the wash. They didn't like that. They said, you can't drain the water anymore. 
and there's just a few things and then i remember one time like they just made me like scrub the floors in the back room after like they had some sort of spill and like i didn't even cause a spill so like why do i have to do this it was just weird things like that i think i worked there for like two or three months getting paid nine dollars an hour and yeah it just wasn't my cup of tea then one then it, oh eventually they were over hiring and over scheduling so there was a point where i was at the job and like there was three people just sitting in the front next to me and also like the new people were joining were very annoying at least the the main set of employees back then were fine but as soon as they added those other people who just started like really getting on my nerve and i was usually at the front taking orders i enjoyed that i enjoyed talking to people being like hey how can i help you what do you want for your order there was three people who were fighting over getting to that spot and i was like this is crazy so that was a day like i remember uh that day i was actually getting my pc finally getting it to my house and i just was like okay i'm done i'm walking home i left i walked out i never went back to work there and i basically that year i just spent like being inside it was kind of a depressing year because i didn't have any friends i stopped going to school that year and i was just inside on the computer like just watching youtube kind of wasting away i didn't feel productive i was making beats a lot because if you know me i'm a music producer all the music that i have on my channel is my personal music if you didn't know all the background music i'm still trying to make better compilations and i'll probably have some tools that'll help me create background music because it's kind of a pain to like tweak the sound settings on each video but yeah so i just spent that year this was in 2019 by the way i spent it just making beats watching youtube being online like chronically online i never left the house basically and then over time like the next year 2020 there really wasn't much happening but i was making beats my channel was growing I remember I hit a thousand subscribers and that was like something I was working on for years. It felt so good to hit a thousand subscribers. And I was selling beats. Like I would always be talking to people and on Instagram, that's where they have to go and message me to buy a beat. But it was always some sort of haggling process where like I didn't have a set price. So they would always message me on how much a beat is. And then I would try to, you know, negotiate. But a lot of those dudes don't want to negotiate. Like as soon as they hear something that's too high, they just will like not talk to you they'll ghost it's just really frustrating for someone to message you like hey can i buy a beat how much is a beat and then you say like 70 dollars, and you're like oh no i can't do it you know and we could have worked something out you could have negotiated you could have said like hey can i do 20 and i'll be like yeah sure 20 bucks would be awesome because i didn't have any money that's after i quit that job so i was really struggling as an artist and it was hard and that's when i started coding though eventually because I wanted to build a store for my music to sell my beats. And there was some options available on the market, but those options just didn't seem chill to me. I remember one company called Track Train. That was like the, uh, the company that a lot of my producer friends used back then. But it was, it just had something weird. It had like an invite only option where they didn't let you sign up on the website. You had to actually send them links of your music to get approved. And I just felt like that felt so condescending. Like, what, you don't think I'm good at music? You don't think that I can use your platform? Well, I don't want to use your platform because you guys aren't chill. And then there was also uh, BeatStars. But BeatStars just felt like really like cringy. Like when you go on their website, it just looks all like kind of like hype beast, kind of like bright, weird colors that just don't fit the vibes that I'm going for. I'm someone who really appreciates anime culture, neon lighting, like cool almost like nostalgic 3d art like i really love the old design of the like the early 2000s when they're going for like really futuristic looks beat stars just seemed like it was too much of a like a hype beast kind of platform so i never really got into them also they had all these limits like you could only post mp3 you could only post 10 tracks for sale and i had hundreds of tracks so like if i could only post 10 i would lose most of my customers like i would only have 10 options so it just wasn't vibing for me that's when I eventually I decided to learn coding. Now at the time, my dad had been coding for a while. He's he would build many sites and he'd already had a pretty good job lined up where he was working as a coder. So he was actually using Ruby on Rails. That's the language that he used. And that's what he like I always saw him using Ruby. I always heard him talking about Ruby on Rails. But I never knew that I wanted to code. I always felt like it was just like nerdy or weird. Kind of just because from like growing up, you know, that's what I heard. Not what I heard, but 
It's just how you feel when you're a kid. Like you don't know what's actually cool. You're just following the trends. You're following what's going on in the world. And you don't know like this stuff is actually really cool. That's what I want to change the mindset. I want to show you guys coding is awesome and coding with the right tools is awesome. To have a programming language that you can move very quickly, create products, grow them all by yourself. You don't need to rely on other people. That's why I hate about those complex JavaScript libraries. There's no reason to spend hours building a whole front end and then boom, now you have a front end. It doesn't work. You don't have a back end. Now you have to spend all this time creating the back end for that front end. And that's why teams hire like 10, 20 people, like all these people just to do one site. It doesn't make sense. I think that we should use Ruby on Rails. I think we should do server render views because we're not in a place where you need to do a front end complexity. Like that was a hype. That was a trend that happened because for whatever reason, you know, browsers were slow back then. Hitting the back end was, was always like, oh, it takes so long to, to send a message to the back end. But did it really? Or were you guys overthinking things? And maybe, maybe it was a good thing because it opened up all those jobs. But for the individual, the artist, the creative person, the entrepreneur inside of you, I think it's very limiting. You don't want to have to waste your whole life building a React app, right? You want to build many apps. You want to improve. You want to create thousands of ideas and do it very quickly and have all of your apps. You know, once you grow these Ruby on Rails apps, I, I want to, that's why I want to teach people is because I want to have more Ruby on Rails jobs on the market so that maybe Ruby on Rails could be the biggest language in a few years. It could have, there could be, you know, millions even of companies who are hiring for Ruby on Rails developers. And that could be the new trend, you know, because Ruby on Rails is awesome. You can do so much. We could change the world with apps. We could build all these new ideas that nobody's ever thought of. And then now there will be all these jobs for Ruby on Rails developers. And you guys who are learning Rails, you can create the businesses or you can just get those jobs when they're on the market. So yeah, that was a story. I'm pretty inspired right now. And that's why I want you to come along this journey. So like that was a little bit about myself and I kind of got sidetracked, but I'm glad that I told you and I'm glad that I got to tell that story. But from there, the main idea of this video, I'm gonna get hired. I'm gonna try to see what's on the market right now. What type of Ruby on Rails jobs are there out there right now? I'm not sure. I haven't looked at it in a while because the last time I was trying to get a job was like over on the holidays and everybody was being so weird. I had some really bad experiences. Maybe I'll tell, that, tell you about that in another video. But yeah, I had some really bad experiences. People just wasting my time, making me do hours of coding and coding challenges unpaid with no hope of a job. You know, like they were giving me hope like, yeah, yeah, we'll totally hire you. Just do this coding challenge but then they would just waste my time, not get back to me. And that's insane to do that to me as a person. Like that's rude. It made me very mad at them. Very, very mad. And it took a while for me to get over that so that I could even get back into the process of like looking for new jobs. It's hard. And I know some of you guys will sympathize with this or like feel my pain. Like it's hard to get a job when you don't have work. Like it's hard day after day. You don't have money, you don't have anything. Like how are you supposed to even live if you can't get hired? It's hard. But that's what I want to change in this world. I don't want it to be bad. Also, I went to a meetup group earlier this month and it was just so depressing. It was full of like these old people who just had had like stories that they were telling. Also, they were all getting just super drunk, telling stories about back in like 2012, 2014, when Ruby on Rails was so great. And now only like five people showed up to the meetup group. And also one person came and like they couldn't find it. Me, I went with my dad and we could barely find the meetup group. And it just wasn't very inspiring. Like I was hoping that when I got there, I would get a job because on the, on the description on meetup.com, it showed like all these guys, like one of the dudes was um, like a tech lead at weed maps, which sounded chill because you know, he's interested, he likes weed and he's also a tech lead, which means a tech lead can get you hired right away. Weed maps is a huge company. So I was thinking, you know, I could probably get a job like there if I just meet him. Guess what? He wasn't there. It didn't look like anybody worked at me weed maps there. They were all just like drinking and yeah, they just didn't seem that chill. Nobody really offered me a job. We did get to know each other a little bit, but it was just like awkward and not very exciting. Although I'm going to go, I'm not hating on them completely. I'm just saying I want to bring some life back into the Ruby community. I want to make things awesome again. I want to, I don't want the heydays. I don't want the, 
stories of like 10 years ago like stop don't talk about 10 years ago let's make it let's literally make ruby on rails better let's bring more people to the meetups the reason why nobody's coming is because they're very uncomfortable and it's not getting anybody anywhere so that's why i need to create better like even the talks the talks that they have available are just so boring so i'll probably start doing talks there but eventually i'm going to start my own meetup groups in the city that i'm in i'm in austin texas if you guys are in austin texas hey send me a message because we could actually meet up and talk about coding talk about your ideas and i could help you this was whatever because i'm down to do that i'm down to meet more people but i just wanted to share this with you and tell you that i'm starting this series i'm going to be getting a job i'm going to take you guys along and show you the whole process how do you get hired as a ruby on rails developer how did i get hired i've already got hired for like four or five jobs since 2020 when i started learning i got hired for a job that paid 75 hour when I was when I just turned 18 years old. So like basically still 17 years old, just turned 18. I got hired as a senior software developer with only one year experience. And I want to show you how you guys can do that because you don't have to listen to standards. You don't have to listen to like, hey, you need to go to college. You know what I'm going to say right now? College is a scam. Colleges don't care about the students. Colleges are just run by business CEOs who are taking money from you and your parents. That's what they're doing. And just for some credentials in this society, who cares about credentials? I don't care about credentials. When I'm hired for Ruby on Rails developers, a college degree is just gonna be like, okay, you spent four years of your life going to college. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me uh, because it's all about skills. You know, do you have skills? You went to college for four years? Are you skilled? You know, it doesn't matter. I, over the past four years, I went from nothing to working like four or five senior developer jobs, making hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, yeah, I hope you guys are excited. This, this series is going to be awesome. It's going to be so exciting.